In this tutorial, I'm going to show you three different tools that you can use to find old versions of websites and why you might want to do that. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below this video. I try to answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass from the WP Learning Lab. We, we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. Now let's get started. The first of the three tools we're going to check out is Wayback Machine. It's the one I use the most often. All you do is you go to archive.org forward slash web and let's zoom in here a bit, put in a URL and click on browse history. And this will show how many times this particular website's been saved. In Microsoft.com's case, 174,444 times between October 1996 and May 10th, 2021. And we can see the timeline up here, all the years of saved data. Any year you click on here, it's gonna show a calendar down below where you click on individual days and see the snapshots on those days. Some days have more than others. For example, the larger circles mean more snapshots. February 23rd of this year has 1,793 snapshots of Microsoft.com. January 1st of this year has 97. I don't know the difference between the green and the blue. Doesn't seem too significant, but maybe it is, I don't know. If we go back to, let's say 1999, Let's look at January 17th. There's six snapshots. Let's click on one of the times. This is the time of day when the snapshot was taken. In this case, 3.38 in the morning. And we can see the Microsoft website as it looked way back then. And I'm really happy the web has become more visual. If you look at Microsoft today, it looks much more engaging and much more appealing than back then. But this is how websites were back then, mostly links, and that worked just fine. And now, today, this works just fine. I find a lot better though. The last thing to note about the Wayback Machine is the bigger and more important the website, the more snapshots it's gonna have. If we go back to the homepage, we see there are more than 544 billion web pages saved over time. And of that, Microsoft was 170,000 of them. If we look up WP Learning Lab, my website, it only has 74 snapshots because my website is not as important as Microsoft's. It's also not as old. So if you're looking for websites that were really small, really low traffic or brand new, there might not be any snapshots available in the Wayback Machine or any of the other tools for that matter. And if you're finding this tutorial helpful, click the like button because that helps this video show up for more people on YouTube so we can spread the knowledge and help more people with this information. So make sure you click like if you like this video. The second tool to find old websites is oldweb.today. This one allows you to choose old browsers to emulate those websites as well. You want to add your URL here first, and then you can choose a browser. As soon as you select a browser, it's going to start navigating to whatever URL is in here. In my opinion, I should have put the browser selection after the URL. A little confusing having it backwards like that. I'm going to choose Netscape Navigator 4. That is super old school, super old school Mac operating system. It takes a little while to load because it's got to load the actual browser on this old, old machine and then it has to go to the website and see if there's any old versions. And here's an old version from 1996 was the date that was pre-selected for Microsoft. Still loading. This image here is broken. This one's broken. This is something you quite often see when you look at old websites, broken images, broken pages. Sometimes you can actually click through to these pages and see the website and browse the website. Sometimes you can't. Really depends on how well the caching was done. You change the date to choose a time frame that's different than the one that we saw just now. Let's do 2011. Click on reload. That skip navigator might not be able to load this newer version of the Microsoft homepage. And here's how it looks. Not very good. Clearly, Netscape Navigator is not able to interpret the newer version of the CSS because this is not how the Microsoft homepage looked at that time. And I try to scroll down, now it's reloading. So with oldweb.today, if you're using an older browser, make sure you're using an older archive date as well. Otherwise, it's not gonna load properly. And the last tool we're gonna look at, the third one on our list, is the Library of Congress. This is the largest collection of audio, books, website archives in the world. All we have to do to find a website is type it in here. So let's look for Microsoft.com and see what comes up. And we filter on the left here for web archive because it has a lot of other stuff related to Microsoft as well, even notated music. So we have our web archive for Microsoft Corporation right here. If we click on that, we see screenshots of the old version of the Microsoft website. This one's much newer than the versions that we saw earlier. Has dates you can choose from between 2008 and 2021. So it's not going back as far as the Wayback Machine was. 
and that did not take us to more Microsoft stuff. I find the Congress Library of Congress website a little harder to navigate for these kind of things, but it does give you more detail. For example, the flight simulator gives you information about the flight simulator, what it actually was. If you click on it, just like we saw from the Microsoft homepage, it gives you more information about it. You can also navigate through categories instead of using the search to find the stuff that you want in Library of Congress. I would recommend this is the third place you go if you have trouble finding what you want in the other two tools. The second place to go is oldweb.today. In the first place, the place I always go to first is the Wayback Machine. It allows me to see older versions of websites. I've used this many times for when websites were hacked and the person who was hacked doesn't have a backup. So I can go back and see what the website was, what it looked like before, and then we can recreate it as closely as possible to what it was before, as long as the archives are thorough enough. Sometimes for smaller websites, all you have is a homepage to view, but that's better than nothing at all. Next up, check out this video right here where I help you speed up your site beyond what you might think is possible. And then check out this video down here where I show you how to secure your website. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.